Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here. My uh, role normally involves me um, improving and reforming the GMC's fitness to practice process, but I've been very lucky to lead the GMC's Supporting a Profession Under Pressure program that was established in 2017 in response to concerns about pressures on doctors and the link to quality of care. Next slide, please. Um, a key part of that work was commissioning independent research on the mental health and well-being of doctors. And it, it was a great privilege that I had to work closely with the joint chairs of the review, Professor Michael West and Dame Denise Coyer. The focus of the research was very specifically to create a robust evidence base around the issues relating to well-being on the medical profession, but specifically around the prevalence, the impact, the factors that most influence well-being in the workplace and what primary interventions are effective. The work involved talking to a huge range of doctors to healthcare leaders, um, but what we heard was a very consistent story that I think at, at its heart is about the danger of focusing on systems and not people. And in trying to develop systems to enhance productivity, um, some of the things that get lost is the fact that well-being of people is, is key to productivity. Some of it was about basics, about people asking people how they are, noticing if they'd been away, somewhere secure to put your belongings. We, we did hear about quite a lot of people getting to the end of long shifts and find their keys or their shoes had been stolen or disappeared. Um, somewhere away from patients to talk to colleagues, specifically around the toll that working with serious illness and, and death has. Being part of a team and being supported by a team and, and the importance of rests and, and food and, and drink. The findings uh, of the review pointed to factors that are critical to well-being at work, what we call the ABC of well-being, autonomy and control for people in relation to how they work and the way their work is delivered. A sense of belonging, being part of a community, caring for and being cared for by other people in the workplace. And also having the support in your working environment that's necessary in order to support you to be competent and effective in your role. Next slide, thanks. The, the research was very clear in terms of the chair's approach that they wanted this to be about solutions and not just find what the issues were and so a lot of emphasis went on trying to identify what primary interventions work in the workplace and so these, these are some of the key things that they identified um, the importance of staff engagement in relation to delivering work appropriate workplace facilities and schedules effective team working compassionate and inclusive leadership and in terms of the impact of, of workloads and working hours on people, um, strategies for managing that, including a range of roles in multidisciplinary teams, new technologies to increase efficiency and flexibility, and the importance of process improvements that support staff. Part of that research involved some analysis. Um, so I've pulled a part of it out here. So there was analysis of the GMC's national training survey, which is the, the largest survey of doctors in the UK. Um, and specifically looking at the, the way different factors interrelate to each other. And that analysis found that teamwork, a supportive environment and good supervision buffer or protect against the negative effects of workloads and long working hours on well-being. Thank you. Um, so that research was published right at the end of 2019. 2020 was obviously um, a very unusual year. And so it's important to think about 
in terms of that research, what does it mean and what have we learned from the last year? So I'm just going to mention briefly a few a few surveys. So we GM Meta survey in 2020, which was just under 4,000 doctors completed last summer. And just to pull out a few things here. So a very high percentage of people are doctors had a significant change to their work. 42% were redeployed. Um, interestingly, 51% were working within their scheduled hours, and that was actually up from 2019, quite noticeably. And 15% were working beyond their hours and, and unable to cope. And that was actually down from 2019. In terms of well-being, uh, quite an impact, though, nonetheless, you can see, of working within the challenging circumstances of last year, and, and I'm sure that's continuing. 32% reporting a negative impact and 41% a mixed impact, a smaller percentage reporting a positive impact. On the right-hand side, I think this is really important, that a high degree of support in terms of how doctors felt supported it is a bit mixed about where they're getting support from. So 85% felt supported by colleagues, 68% from seniors, 80% by teams, and 52% by management. Um, and very importantly, in terms of satisfaction, 42% felt satisfied with their working environment. And that was actually up from 2019. 16% uh, felt dissatisfied, and that was down from 2019. So quite quite an in varied and interesting pick. We also had the National Training Survey, as I mentioned, very large survey um, last summer. It was a shortened version focused on the pandemic. Next slide, thanks. Again, it's quite a varied picture. So a high impact on people, 57% significantly, a big uh, impact on training, 41% saying increased workloads, although a similar number saying lighter workloads. So I think I think there were quite different impacts for different people depending on where and in what roles they were working again these high levels of support 85 percent reported a supportive working environment although I, I guess less encouragingly there was a difference in how well people felt supported depending on their ethnicity but overall a high level uh, well-being um, again, you're seeing those high levels of redeployment. And actually, those that were redeployed had uh, a noticeably higher level of risk of burnout than, than those who, who weren't redeployed. So I think there's a kind of mixed picture there. So significant changes, noticeable impact on well-being, workloads heavier for some lighter than others, disproportionate impact of the pandemic on BAME communities. But I think the flip side to that is an increase, increased awareness of needs of healthcare staff. High levels of support within the environment, greater visibility of the importance of inclusion. Uh, we've definitely heard wide reports of significantly reduced bureaucracy in developing new approaches and a significant advance in the use of new technologies. I think overall there is some contradictions in there in some ways because you're seeing these impacts but you're also seeing um, high, high, you know, increased satisfaction and I think my reflection on what that was perhaps pointing back to that work that was done on in caring for doctors, caring for patients on protective factors, um, because doctors are highly trained and they are that they do like challenge. Challenge can either be uh, have a positive or a negative impact, and I think what we're seeing is that when people have the support that they need, um, it has a much more positive impact. So how can the GMC help? In 2020, our focus was very much about the front line. So we registered 
a significant number of additional doctors. We hosted an ethical hub on our website. Um, we changed a wide range of our procedures to reduce stress on the front line. So this year, we're focusing on the support for good workplace cultures with the link to supporting good care. We've identified three priorities, leadership and very specifically compassionate inclusive leadership. So we're looking at pathways for clinical leadership because clinicians have very structured pathways for developing their clinical skills, but there's a much less clear pathway for developing leadership. So we're, we're looking at that and how we can strengthen that. But also again, the incentives in clinical work are much more structured and clearer. And we want to look at how, how do we incentivize clinical leadership? Um, but it's not all about clinical leadership. And so we are also prioritizing working with partners across the system to support compassionate, inclusive leadership across the whole of healthcare. Inclusion is a very clear priority for this year. And we have a program to accelerate change to address the differentials that we've seen for, for a long time in the outcomes of medical training and GMC referrals to, um, from employers in relation to ethnicity and where people qualified. And finally, we're prioritizing how we can work with others to support people in the workplace. So specifically looking to work with others to strengthen induction, to strengthen effective feedback to people in the workplace and a, an ongoing program of, of workplace support. I think, just to, to, to final, say a few final comments, we're going to see pressure on the system for some time to come. As I mentioned, uh, the medical profession is prepared for challenge, but, but it's about how we protect and support them in the workplace to make sure that that, that challenge is, is a positive experience for them and for patients. So we, we need to continue to work together to make sure that that, that support is there. Thank you.